Okay, so um, this is our teaching and learning in UX working group call for Wednesday, August 2nd. And um, let me go ahead and share my screen just so we have something to look at in the recording. I'll share the agenda. The agenda link is also in the chat if you'd like to go ahead and um, and sign in, that would be great. Um, and uh, just by way of announcements, um, Sakai 23 was released recently. It came out on the 14th, right before SakaiCon. Um, so it's been you know a couple weeks now, but in case you weren't already aware. Um, and the recordings from uh, the presentations at SakaiCon are also available on YouTube. So there's a playlist there. There's a link in the Etherpad. Um, to the playlist where you can watch um, the presentations that were recorded. Now, um, not everything was recorded, uh, so not everything is available on YouTube, but the um, majority of the, the uh, individual presentations are up. Jeremy, were you going to say something? I thought I heard your microphone. No? Okay. Hi, Jennifer. Nice to see you. Um, okay, so today um, what I thought we would talk about um, are uh, TA permissions in Sakai. So um, Andrea, who does uh, a lot of the testing for us and uh, leads the QA team, um, she sent me some questions about the TA permissions because they had been testing them and found them to be inconsistent across tools. Uh, so she wanted to know what the um, expectation would be for different scenarios. And so I thought this might be a good topic for us as a group to take a look at because um, sometimes people use the TA role a little bit differently. So I thought it would be good to kind of walk through some of the scenarios that she outlines and uh, and see what folks think the expected behavior would be. I mean, obviously I could give my guess of what I would expect, but that might not be what everyone would expect. So um, so anyway, so I've pasted in some information here from Andrea. Um, this, uh, this first link here is to a testing spreadsheet where they were kind of tracking the results of the testing. And so if you go to that link, you'll see um, they've got some notes here on the expectations uh, that they, or what they observed and, you know, when, when she's not sure if that is what the expected behavior should be for some of these things. Um, and then there's also another link to uh, some permissions specific to the grade book. Um, so there's another doc that she sent me um, that is a little more narrative, kind of summarizing what the testing was and which versions and what they observed um, and whether or not this uh, would be a, the expected behavior is kind of what we want to get at. Um, so uh, let's just kind of go through her bullets first. Um, so in the testing, um, they observed that conversations doesn't uh, observe anything for, for TAs. It totally uh, ignores groups for TAs. So if you add a TA to a group, it doesn't give that TA any special group permissions or limit the TA view per group or anything like that. Um, the dashboard does seem to work when you assign a TA to a group, um, but unfortunately the instructor doesn't see all of the tasks. So that's a separate issue. I think there's some JIRAs for a few of these as well. Um, in the Dropbox tool, the TA permissions appear to be group controlled, but the drop down, um, et cetera, shows all the groups. Um, so they, even though they can't access the other groups, they can only access their own group, they still see everybody. Um, and the and assignments only um, display when the TA creates or grades. Um, creating announcements only lists the group that the TA belongs to. So there's kind of a cluster of different things <laughs> going on here. Um, and in the roster, the TA sees their own group, but doesn't see the instructor and students don't see the instructor either. 
Um, and then uh, this one here with uh, regard to rubrics, TAs can't see or use rubrics in assignments. Um, now that one seems like a clear bug because typically a TA would be grading things. Um, and you would want uh, anyone grading to be able to access a grading rubric if it's attached to an item. So, um, so that seems like a bug. But um, anyway, so that's a little bit of the summary. Um, maybe we can kind of go through one at a time and talk a little bit about what people think um, should happen in each of these cases. So let's let's start with the first one, which is conversations. What sort of permissions would you expect? Um, a TA to get by default in conversations. I think it kind of depends on their role as a TA. I mean, if it's a really big class, would they mm -hmm. maybe be assigned a group to like monitor a conversation? Mm-hmm. We don't so have these if, classes, so we don't really have TAs, so. <clears throat> right. Um, so you think that if they're assigned to groups, then they should only see their groups by default? Is that? That's what I was thinking, and then they can manage that if that's something that a TA would do at another school. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I would think they would need that access. Right. Anybody else? Jeremy, do you all use TAs much at LAMP? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Of course, that would be based on an individual client, but we are working with a, a K-12 client currently that we're probably going to use the TA uh, feature because they have some um, teachers that do not have much experience inside of Sakai and they have an instructional design team that is putting in all of their content and there's a little concern that these teachers in their inexperience may do things that um, they shouldn't so I think they're gonna we're gonna use them as TAs inside of the sites to help prevent catastrophic issue. So I don't have much experience uh, with the TA, unfortunately. Okay, Christina, how about you guys? Do you use TAs much? The only classes I've seen ever use the TA role is some of our nursing class to put to add um, some of the lab managers in as TAs so they can just put scores into the grade book. Mm -hmm. um, they set that to be able to grade the entire class so they don't use groups or sections um, at all with that, so. Okay. All right, so even though not everybody is using TAs or using them in the same way, um, it seems like if TAs are assigned groups because there may not be groups available or sections available in which case it would default to the whole class but if they're assigned to groups then um, the expectation oops, be that the ta would see their own groups only by default Obviously, that setting could be changed if need be, but um, does that seem reasonable? Are you talking just about conversations there? Well, it's going to kind of apply to a lot of them, but we're starting with conversations because it ignores mm -hmm. groups completely. Yeah, I would say if a item i'm gonna say item because it would be conversation or assignment or anything if it's released to specific groups and not the whole class then definitely the in the ta should only see their own group mm -hmm. and items 
I release two groups and not whole class. Okay. Whole oh, class. I guess I'd have the question of should they see just the members of their whole group for or just the members of their group for grading? Or I don't know. Yeah. Um well in conversations, um, if people post then you know they would see other people posting on the board, but they would only be able to grade certain ones. But you don't get kind of a list of people in conversations necessarily. Um, you do get a list like in the grade book and other places. So that would be, I think, more important if you want the rest of the class to not be visible at all. But let's um so I think I think we've kind of covered conversations, at least uh first pass. <laughs> so the dashboard, um, Andrew is reporting that it, it does seem to work as expected, meaning that TAs only see group items to groups in which they belong. That's how I take that to, um, to be. But the instructor doesn't see tasks assigned to groups. So that seems like a bug to me. Instructor should always all group items by default. Does everyone agree with that? Instructors should see all tax, but group ones should have the name of the group. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Um, group items should be designated by group name title to differentiate them. Right. And you said lessons is a good example of that. You mean like the um, selective release? Yeah, if you in lessons, if you release something just to a specific group, it puts the group name in the little square brackets and I think in italics behind it. So in the Dropbox, um, TA permissions are group controlled, but the drop down to view all groups shows all groups, even though they can only access their own group. So um, I'm going to break this out because it looks like these are kind of separate things. So um, I was cutting and pasting out of Andrew's email. So <laughs> the bullets are maybe not in the right places. Um, all right. So the Dropbox. Um, should TAs be able to view all the folders, even though they can only access some of them, or should the folders that they can't access be hidden? I don't think, I personally don't have a problem with the TAs being able to see the drop down that just lists the group names that I don't see as being problematic. Mm -hmm. It's just if they pick the wrong group from the drop down, they're going to see just a big they're, yeah, they're not going to see anything. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if there's any kind of error message that appears when you, if you select the wrong group. Um, but it seems like it would be simpler if they only saw their own groups. Um, now, if they have access to more than one group, then maybe those would, they would have a choice. But it seems to me that um, it would be less confusing if they don't have access to something to just not have it appear in the drop down. Yeah, Jennifer agrees. It would be okay to see the list of groups, but 
it makes more sense if they're they only see their own groups listed. Okay, so um, what, if, not a huge... I'm, I'm throw out there. what if there was multiple sets of groups? Like, let's mm -hmm. say we've got group one, two, and three, and our TA is a member of group one, and then there's also groups A, B, C, and D. Um, if the TA is not a member of, say, group A, but several members of the TA's group one are, if they selected group one from the list, should they be able to see those members that are both group one and group A? Just to throw serious confusion and monkey wrenches into the works. Um, so you're saying if if there's multiple groups and multiple a student groups, so okay. Let's say we got three big groups: one, two, and three. Okay. And our TA is a member of group one. Okay. And then there's smaller groups, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Mm-hmm. Could, should the TA be able to select, say, group A from the dropdown and see those who are kind of the Venn diagram, those who are in group one that the RTA does have access to see, and, but who are only members of group A? Right. Um, Just to throw complicated I, wrenches yeah. into it. Well, I would think if the if the if the drop down menu only shows the groups to which the the TA belongs. So if the TA is assigned to group A, but they're not assigned to like section one, which has people from A, B, C, and D in it. Um, if they select group A, they're only going to get their people, right? Mm -hmm. If they selected group one, they could either get an incomplete list or get people that they don't they're not assigned to. Mm -hmm. So I think you know, if they sense. had access to both, if they had access to group one and team A, um, then they could That's see the entire group people. one or they could see team A. Um, okay. So then it definitely then more streamlined if it only shows the groups that they are a member of. Right. Yeah, it would just avoid confusion of them picking the wrong one and wondering why they're not getting any students. Okay. And then also eliminates my little Venn diagram scenario. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. There's always an edge case, right? <laughs> but I think that works. I think that I'm good at works. edge cases. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's see. Next one is assignments only displays a group when the TA creates or grades. Um, let's see, and then she moves on to assign announcements. So let's make that a different one. Okay, so assignments only displays the group when the TA creates or grades the assignment, I would imagine, because um, you can make it so that a TA can uh, create assignments, although that's not the default permission. Um, so that seems correct to me, right? If it's if it's um, treating the group like I think it is, I, I, the way I interpret her, her bullet and the next one are explanations of the Dropbox because she's saying how the assignments works and creating uh -huh. announcements only works. So I would expect the Dropbox. So oh, I see. Just, I okay, so all of these are sort of subcategories of Dropbox. Let me indent them to reflect that. Okay, so assignments. Okay, yeah, we don't need we don't need extra. Yeah, I think this she's covers all of them. And the announcements message as an explanation as to why she expects Dropbox to only show the yes. group that the TA belongs to. So justification as to why what we agreed is right. Right. Okay. Um, thank you for helping me make sense of that, <laughs> Christina, because it wasn't it wasn't penetrating my skull this morning. So I appreciate the help. Um, okay. Um, so in the roster, shifting gears now to the roster tool, the TA sees their own group, 
but they don't see the instructor and students also don't see the instructor in the roster. Um, is that expected? Did the TA need to see the instructor in the roster for any reason? I think by default, the students don't see anyone in the roster except for themselves, unless they change, unless the instructor changes the permission. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, raises the question of should all users see all instructors in the roster. So for a student or TA, or for students especially, should that always show themselves and the instructor? Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems like it might be useful information for the student, um, let alone TAs, to know who the instructor is and be able to contact them you know, based on their profile. Um, but hopefully that information is also provided elsewhere in the course so they know who the instructor of the class is. Um, But given that students don't currently see it, I think it's probably okay that the TAs don't either. Um, however, like you said, it kind of begs the question of, well, maybe you should be able to see the instructor in the roster if you're not an instructor. Okay, so Jeremy is saying that he thinks the TA should see um, the instructor in the roster. And Jennifer's also saying that students should see the instructor, didn't realize they didn't. And I'd have to double check that, but I, I think you're right, Christina. All right, so, um, all right, so, TAs should see instructor, is that, is that what we agree? And ideally, students should also see instructor in the roster. All right. Any other comment on that one? All right, and then we'll move on to this last one. TAs can't see or use rubric in assignments. That seems like a bug. If the TA is grading assignments, it looks they should be able to use the grading rubric. If, if there is one attached to the assignment. Does everyone agree with that? I see Adrian typing. Just sounds like a permissions issue in the realm template. Yeah. Yeah, we should get that fixed. Shouldn't be a huge thing, but it should be a, a permission that's set by default. Um, okay, so uh, gradebook permissions. So this one is kind of its own animal, and there's a couple of JIRAs um, related to that that she already set up, um, and we could take a look at those individually if we need to, but I'm going to go first to the document that she sent. Um, so the, this is um, describing some testing that was done in 24 and 22. Um, so there was an initial test where um, two TAs were added to the site. There's three student groups in the site. Neither TA is added to a group. 
um, and the grade book permissions are set to allow TA1 to grade group one, but there's no grade book permissions for TA2. So that's kind of setting the stage. So in assignments in the grade book, um, in 24, uh, the assignment permissions were not modified because you can do that separately. So those were left alone. Um, and on the default, the instructor created an assignment release to groups with individual submissions. Um, and clicking on the assignments tab, both TAs see the same message. There's currently no assignments at this um, location. So the instructor creates a grade book item um, and clicking on the grade book, the TAs, uh, TA1 sees only group one members, but is unable to grade the grade book item. And in TA2, um, TA sees all students, but unable to grade. Uh, but they, since, since they have no permissions, that should be fine. Um, and then there's a grade book message, and this was the JIRA that was created. So she's saying that uh, TA can only send to the entire site, expected this to default to group one. Um, TA two can send to the entire no groups listed. I think that's in a oh, grade book message. That's where you message students from the grade book. OK, I get it. Um, and then the instructor doesn't see any groups in the drop down. They inspect, expected the instructor to be able to message the site or individual groups. Um, so I yeah, I would expect if TA1 is um, allowed to grade group one, they should be able to grade the, gra the group one gradebook item. Um, let's see. I'm going to ask, yeah. is that a word I didn't see? Was that a manually created gradebook item or was that the gradebook item from assignments? Yeah, that's what I was kind of going back to try to reconstruct. Instructor yeah. creates a gradebook item. I think this is a different test. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, would, I think it was an assignment up here and a gradebook item here. Okay. Then I would definitely say they should be able to grade the gradebook item. But if they're not mm -hmm. a member of group one and the instructor did not modify the assignment permissions, then I would expect that they wouldn't be able to see or grade the assignment for group one. Right. Um, so for that test in 24, I would expect the TA one um, to view the group one members like it can, but be able to grade the instructor created grade book item, but then not be able to do anything with the assignment. Okay, I'm going to paste this in because it looks like I don't have that in access or not. So I'm going to paste this into here so we can kind of make a note. So um, this was part of that document. Okay, so did not modify assignment permissions instructor. I'm just indenting so we know it all belongs to this. Um, so this would be expected, right? It would expected. Be. TA should not see assignments released to group since assignments terms not modified. Correct, Christina? Yeah, oh, and so TA is not a member of one of those groups. Um, so this, the second one was the grade book instructor creates a grade book item. Oh, what happened? It jumped on me. Okay, here we go. Apparently it doesn't like me cutting and pasting like this. All right, so this was uh, TA1 should be able 
to grade. The, the gray book I know. And TA2 is as expected, right? We, you would expect them to see the column, right? Even though they don't have rights to edit it. I think it would depend on if the TA had the permission um, in the grade book to view. All groups or all class, all site, whatever it's called. Okay. All right, so does that sound like the, the expected behavior there? So the TA should be able to grade the grade book item. Um, They only see group one members, and that is correct, I think, because they only, let's see here. Um, yeah, so if they're if assigned to group, should only see their group members. Group. I forget what the drop down says, but they should, if they're assigned to view only a specific group, then I would expect that they would only see that group listed. Um, okay. So let's see, instructor does not see any groups in the drop down. And this is the, um, oh, these are some different permutations in the messaging part of the grade book. So the TAs can only send to the entire site. Um, they expected to be able to default to group one. TA can also send to the entire site, no groups listed, and the instructor doesn't see any groups at all. Um, are there groups in that? I forget. Adrian, you would know, right? Are there groups in the message students by default? Yes, if there's any groups created, um, they should be listed there. Okay, so the fact that the instructor's not seeing them at all is definitely a problem. Bug bug. Um, yep, so that would be a bug. Um, and this one would as well, they should be able to at least see the group that they're assigned to. Um, so these are both. I think those are the ones that are on here. Yeah. So these are both bugs. Bug. All right, so those are already documented in JIRA. So I can go and add a comment on those so we agree that that is not working as it should. Um, okay, so I think that covers everything that uh, Andrea had asked about for the TA permissions. So I will try to put this together to her so she can relay it to back to her testers. And then maybe um, if needed, we'll create some more uh, JIRAs around this. Um, Oh, and Christine is also saying that gradebook messages would be great if they could select multiple groups. Yes, that's a that's a good point. I'm going to make a note of that because we might need to do a feature request about that. Um, Very good. All right. Um, so it looks like we got through um, what I had hoped that we would for the main part of the agenda. We do have a little bit of time left if we want to tackle a couple of these other JIRAs that were carried over from earlier um, meetings. Does anyone have a preference as to which one to talk about?
Random draw. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go with the first one in order. Oh, and I see someone put a, a new one in there. Peer review and submissions. Okay, so that's different for peer review and then grader, right? It inspired me. Ah, <laughs> okay. Um, well, since you're here, we will go ahead and talk about yours first. So let me go find that one. Um, I'm just going to use this to get a quick link to Jira, and then we'll grab the number. It's 49086. So 49086. There we go. All right. So would you like to kind of walk us through this one, Christina, since you're the author? <laughs> Um, sure. Right now, if the instructor sets up an assignment with a peer review and links it into an um, into a lessons page, the students don't see anything in the original submission except unless the instructor includes it in the ins actual instructions that says it's a peer review. And then to get to their peer reviews after they submit, they have to they can't get to it through the link in lessons. They have to go back to the list of assignments and find it on that list. So I would like to see the peer review information included in the actual like default student submission view. So a student who is getting to an assignment through a link in lessons can see that there's a peer review assigned access their peer review assignments and submit them through the links and lessons, not having to go directly to the assignments tool just for that. And it didn't attach my pictures. Who upon them? Give me two seconds. Lots of pictures just got attached. So that's the current one. This is Christina's pretty um basic mock-up just of how it could look perhaps having them like as an accordion list inside the original submission I think some of them aren't, aren't right. <laughs> okay. I don't have the right pictures. Some of them are there, not all of them.
Oh, I'm sorry. I had muted myself and forgot to unmute. So I've been talking to myself for a little bit. <laughs> I don't know exactly how long. <laughs> um, how much did you guys miss? When did, when, what was the last thing you heard me say? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, I, I hit mute and then forgot to unmute. Um, rookie mistake there. Okay, so um, I put that we like Christina's enhancement. I hope you heard that. Um, it seems like a great um, peer review enhancement to see kind of the status within the assignment itself. And then we I didn't hear any more chatter about that one. So I went on to the next JIRA, which is this one here that I pulled up. Um, and it looks like um, the, the request here is to make the peer review comments visible within the grading UI. So um, the, the mock-up here is showing the grader comments for the reviewers to show up within the document preview area. Does that make sense as a good spot for that content? I think so because it makes it easy for the instructor to reference those comments when they're grading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe as long as it's delineated in some way below like the actual submission, so you know who the grader is if they're not anonymous. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I would, I think that would make sense to have them all kind of in one piece so that you can decide if you want to take the review grade and apply it or not. Um, Any other thoughts on that one? Nope. All right. So I'll say that we agree this would be a good enhancement. Um. And then our last one that we have in here is rubrics sort ratings by point value. Um, let's see, future request to automatically sort rubric ratings by point value. It makes sense not to sort criteria by point value as the instructor might have their own reasons for sorting criteria. I don't see why an instructor would want the point values out of order. So I have two suggestions, automatically sort ratings by point value as the instructor creates ratings, order will get shuffled. So they're always ordered from least to most. Add a button to sort ratings by point value. This will create functionality for instructors who want it without forcing them to use it. Um, if they want a different order, they can keep it. Um, yeah, I don't like the idea of necessarily always sorting from lowest to highest because people might not want that order. But I we do have, like the idea. Our nursing division insists that all of their rubrics be sorted from highest to lowest. Yeah, yeah. So, so I edit every single number rubric. one. I would not. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Christina. So but the ability, open yeah, the ability to yeah. sort in either direction, like where you could, you know, sort of list ascending or descending, whichever you choose. I think that part makes sense. Um, yeah, Jennifer is liking that either or lower to higher or higher to lower, whichever one the instructor needs. Yep, my comment for, down just a little further is the same thing. Ah, okay, yeah. So I definitely agree with your comment there. I'll add a, a plus one in the comments myself afterward. So should be an option Oops. to sort descending 
for the extending and on instructor preference. Yeah. Okay, so I'll add that later. Um, and move that one out since we already talked about it. Okay, um, I think we've gotten through all of our JIRAs that we had um, selected at, at any rate. We've only got about 10 minutes left, so I don't know if there's anything else that somebody would like to, um, to look at before we wrap up for today. Oh, Christina says your peer review JIRA has the right images. If you want to take a quick look at those, we can. Let's see if that's this one, right? So let's see here. Okay, so it's got the peer assessment info down here at the bottom. And then these buttons would affect only a specified review. Would reload this page to allow other reviews. Okay, I like that. And then these links would show um, the individual review instructions, submissions, options, etc. That was just two possible layouts for how students could view their peer review assignments from right. their assignment submission, either as links or an accordion list. Yeah. Yeah, I think either would work. And actually, you know, this kind of link format would also be another alternative for displaying them in the grader as well. You could have just a link for each review there um, if you didn't want it all in line. Um, so either way would work, but very good. Thanks for giving us options there, Christina. All right. Um, does anybody have any other topics that they would like to talk about today? Um, okay, so our August 16th is our next meeting. Um, and currently our agenda is wide open. So if there's anything in particular that people would like to discuss, and it doesn't have to be JIRAs, it could be just a topic of discussion. Um, let me know either now if you have something in mind, or you can always uh, email me or Slack me between now and the 16th to um, suggest something. Um, does anybody have any thoughts uh, at, at the moment on something they'd like to bring to the group? I see Jennifer typing, so I'm going to wait and see what she types. <laughs> She's going to review SakaiCon, maybe something from there. Yeah, that's a great idea. So if you haven't had a chance to, um, to watch the recordings or um, you attended, but maybe kind of are still digesting some of the information from SakaiCon, if there's a topic there that you would like to expand on a little bit more, um, we could certainly either ask the presenter to kind of do a part two or a deep dive into the same topic, or um, we could start a new discussion around that topic, um, depending on, on, you know, what exactly it is you'd like to, to talk about. So um, use that as inspiration if you'd like, and, um, and let me know between now and the 16th if there's anything you want to add to the agenda or any speakers that you'd like me to reach out to to see if they would um, grace us with their presence. <laughs> so, all right, well, I'm going to go ahead and call it for today. So thank you guys for, um, for attending today and for helping me walk through some of these TA permission things. I know sometimes it's a little tricky to kind of imagine what exactly you would do in some of those scenarios. So I appreciate the help on um, slogging through that. And um, hopefully you have a great rest of your week. Thanks, everybody.